Whiskey, Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, tasting mm, rare and exotic whiskeys. I have something um, from Bushmills, the Causeway Collection, 10-year-old Cuvée. I'll talk about that in a moment. This is a 2021 German exclusive release. There was two bottles, the 10, this, and the 30. I did not buy the 30. It was 780 euros. I did buy the year before the 28 year old that was 320 euros. I am not willing to pay double the price for two extra years. That was my problem. So a couple people did buy and said, oh, it was maybe the best whiskey of the year. I actually believe them. The 28 was the best whiskey of the year, but I still have the problem that I'm not willing to pay that much money for a bottle of whiskey, no matter how good it tastes. Now, the question of the day is, how good does this taste? Now, the first thing I love, love, I think is unique, is we have a round and we have a square. <laughs> I think that's kind of cute. Now, these are not the new bottles yet. Now, the other thing is missing is Helen uh, Mulholland is not on the um, label here. Down below, we have the master distiller. Um, his name is Callum Egan. Um, sometimes you'll see him on some streams every once in a while. So whiskey base number 197, 790, 72 to 74, 75 euros over here in Germany. I think I mentioned that we have 54.8% ABV. Yay. So many years we had to be just happy with 40% in Bushmills. And then God gave us, I have to say the Mexicans gave us. The Mexicans bought this from Diageo or traded it. The Mexicans gave us real whiskey from Bushmills with more than 40%. Thank you. Thank you. And um, 6,500 bottles for Germany only. So what um, Bushmills doing is for each and every region, whatever their name for a region is, they do put out each and um, individual Causeway collections. I have a guy who's actually trying to collect all the Causeways collections. Um, there's special bottles in Australia and special bottles for America and special bottles for Hungary and special bottles for this. I mean... That's a lot of work, talking about hunting down the bottles. All right, so we spent, uh, this whiskey spent eight years in uh, Oroso and bourbon casks. It does not say first fill, it just says here, um, they just had eight years in these casks. And then it received an additional two year finish in cuvee casks. Do you not know what cuvee casks are? Neither did I. I had to read up. So, cuvee just means a marriage, means a blend, so blending casks. Now, cuvee casks, according to Bushmills now in this release, are French oak that, her, that held the first maturation, the first uh, fermentation is what I should say, not maturation, the first maturation of sparkling wine. We can't say champagne, it has to be from that region of champagne in France. So anything outside of that region is just sparkling wine. So I did not know that sparkling wine actually used French oak casks. Ta-da! I learned something new. Now Bushmills got their hands on some of these and then finished this whiskey for two years in them. So behind the scenes for the last couple of years, Bushmills have been doing fantastic stuff. We just didn't see it happening because we had to wait the two years and three years for these cast projects to finish and I'm very 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 happy that we now have a corporate philosophy at Bushmills that is not only 40 percent but also willing to try interesting experiments cognac um, we had here Malaga we had here now with the cuvee um, different things going on beautiful 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 thank you for that now I'm going to compare it to something I can I did a video on about a couple months ago, and this is the Bush Mills 10 year old 10 year old. This is 46 percent, but this is the sherry cask finish. Now this is a one liter bottle. I'm not sure if it was a German exclusive or not, but it was in Germany. I bought a bottle. This was 62 euros for this. This was 72 euros 90 is what I paid for it. Let's put this over here in this direction, and um, this was good. It wasn't great. It was good. I think I actually pulled out my Lestal um, from Red Best and compared the two. Then I remembered how good Lestal was. Um, but this is a fairly, fairly good whiskey. This is good stuff here. All right. Good. So. All right. Now, let's 
first of all, um, I'm going to read the official tasting notes before I come to my tasting notes. All right. So of the 6,500 bottles for Germany, they, we should have an aroma of lemon and grapefruit. And then we should have a strong note of strawberry, sweet strawberry, coming to that lemon and the grapefruit. Now, my problem is the following. I get sulfur. I have become, at least over the last couple of months, I feel it's been more than anything else, almost highly allergic to sulfur. It's just like, oh, sulfur, sulfur alarm. Oh, sulfur, ah. And that's my problem here as well. Now, I'm more angry today at myself for not being able to enjoy this bottle than I am actually at the people who use sulfur casks to create this ugliness in my opinion but hey it's like oh this is a sulfur problem let's send it to germany they most people in germany cannot identify sulfur which is good for them but it's terrible for me i am very very sensitive to the sulfur and that's what i got first of all i did get a little bit of grapefruit i might have gotten a little bit of lemon here i do not get the the strawberries yet all right so this is a little bit higher than 40%. We're now talking about our 54.8%. Love it. Um, even the price of 72 euros, I still think is in today's market acceptable. <laughs> it's not good, but it's just par for course. It's average. That's what we're going to have to pay today for a age statement with a cast strength with a irish triple distilled whiskey in a special finish that's just the prices remember when bookers used to cost 40 dollars now it's almost 100 and that's three four years now the same thing's happening here with irish whiskey and all the other things in the world it's just unfortunately a fact of life all right, so I'm willing to pay 72 euros for a good bottle of Bushmills um, at cast strength. I'm not willing to pay 72 euros for a 10-year-old Bushmills at 40%. Never, never, ever. I'm willing to pay 30-some euros for that. Hmm, so two of the normal for one of these. It's okay, all right? My personal opinion at this moment. It might change in a couple of years, but at the moment, it's just like, well, par for course. I'm going to try this, and then you might see a little bit of disgust in my, in my face, and I'll tell you why. Slancha, cheers. Mm. Sulfur. I get sulfur. Matchsticks. Not, not rotten eggs. I get matchsticks. The typical sulfur that is used to sulfur a use I have a sulfur candle for the for the casks. I've had this taste now dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of times. It's not the sulfur from the distillation process. It's the sulfur from the casks. The casks receive sulfur candle in them. There's a sulfur oxide 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 carbon dioxide sulfur oxide that happens then in the um in the atmosphere of the cask they put the bung back on there it um the 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 wine of the cask either the sherry or the uh, sparkling wine does not spoil on the transport from um, france or spain up to ireland and especially in the summer months we use it more than in the winter months to make sure the casks don't spoil as soon as you put the spirit the distillate the, the alcohol in there it absorbs the sulfur and Jason is not happy. So what we have here is um, it was distilled on the 31st of December 2010, which is great. New Year's Eve party. Very good. It was bottled on the 4th of November 2021. And it was actually um, recasked on the, I think it was, well, wait a second, I have to make sure I get this right here. It was on the 27th of March, 2019. So it's not even two years. It's almost, it's almost 18 months more. All right, so that's that. Um, I can't do my math. It's almost two and a half years. So if it was 19, oh, wow, very nice. Yep, so 
still the 31st of November of, of, of December. We racked here on the um, 27th of March 2019 and then bottled according to the bottle mark or whatever here uh, I have um, it was on the 4th of November. Now I can only say what you should be getting according to the official tasting notes here. If you did not have an allergy against sulfur as I do, you'll get nice little Bushmills vanilla sauce. You will get uh, caramelized toffee moments. You'll get apple pie. You'll get a type of clementines as little oranges as well as a little bit of clove on here. A little bit of allspice. Um, and then you have the citrus fruits on the end here with a little bit of the French oak coming through. That's the official tasting notes. I get sulfur, 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 a little bit of alcohol, and look, oh yes, there is a tiny little bit here of that vanilla and the toffee and a tiny bit of apple and orange. But everything else is so loud. It's like you have, it's imagine um, you had here in your nice little um, earbuds your, iP your, your pods here, you had maybe Beethoven or Bach or any other music you love. Smooth jazz, which I love. And then right beside you have a jackhammer going bom, 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 bom. You can't really pay, I can't, I can't pay attention to the, my earbuds because those, that jackhammer or that jet fighter uh, going at Mach 1.2 or whatever, it just over drowns out everything else and that's what happens with me when i have this sulfur moment as i said i'm more angry at myself than at them but i'm angry at them as well a little bit now it's not me today that's just a over overreacting this for example is a very nice whiskey it was my control whiskey at the very beginning Hmm. Hmm. The 40%, 46%, that sherry cask finish, mm, very nice, very well done. Do I have sulfur in here? Hardly in at all. Do I have a nice sherry um, raisin type of um, nutty moment? Yes, I do. Would I have loved to have this over here? Yes, I would have. Hmm. But I guess when we have a German exclusive, why don't we send them that sulfur bomb whiskeys? All right. Very disappointed. I'm going to disqualify myself from this whiskey from my um, review. Um, all I'm going to say is if you are allergic to sulfur like I am, and literally, we're literally allergic to sulfur. That's why we react. A friend of mine, she's a taster, and when she tastes too many whiskeys, her lips actually just just blow up. They, they, they blow up. They, they just enlarge, and they get all sore and so on because it's an allergic reaction. Um, Recently, I had this one on my on my stream as well. A stream on my um, on my review video, uh, the Fetacad 16 second release, 2021. Same thing. It has the same amount of sulfur, maybe a little bit more than this. I couldn't taste it. Um, that whiskey is terrible. I have other friends that have had this whiskey and given it a A minus, B plus. They love this whiskey, and I just can't even. I can't give it past my nose, let alone my whips, lips, because that sulfur is just too much. Think matches, think you put a match, a camping match in there and you just let it dissolve. That type of sulfur, not for rotten eggs, sulfur matchstick. Not good, not good at all. All right, so first question, what is your favorite Bushmills? Thank you very much and it should have, hopefully it's not 40%. And second of all, um, what other bottles of whiskey have you had that actually had some type of maturation in sparkling wine or champagne casks. I had an Atnemochen, um, it's almost a half a year ago, if not longer. It was actually also in a champagne cask, and I kept on getting a lot of comments, Jason, champagne does not use wood cask. It's like, well, I did here. <laughs> so there's a special type of um, winery that uses them. I was like, okay, I guess you're right, but it's not normal. I never said it was normal. I just said that they, the distiller, found some casks that had champagne in them before. And apparently um, Bushmills found some casks that had um, some sparkling wine in them. I'm going to have to research sparkling wine and champagne more to understand where the casks might actually be introduced in the process of the first maturation. Hmm. All right. Thank you very much for watching, liking, subscribing, telling others, and sharing this video if you'd like. Sorry. Um, all the best and see you very, very soon. Whiskey Jason here. Bye-bye.